guys can duck and dodge, but at the end of the day, I'm only 21. I got a long career ahead of me. There's going to be some totally different new guys. Just going. It's, it's a lot of young guys coming up. I'm coming up. And these big fights are going to happen. You see, I said I'm the boogeyman. And, and, and nobody no, nobody tested me. Nobody said, oh, he ain't the boogeyman. I sent him a contract. And he ain't signing. No, nobody <laughs> say nothing. They can't say, say nothing. I can say I'm the boogeyman. Yeah, all these fighters are scared. Yada, yada, yada. And nobody going to nobody going against me because they know, they know it's the truth. They know that I, that they don't want to fight me. Speaking of the boogeyman status, I mean, before you came on the scene, supposedly the biggest boogeyman was Gary Russell. He pretty much gave up his boogeyman status, like the zone put it. He pretty much waved the white flag silently when it came to fighting you by turning down the offer. And he had the new term sheet he supposedly sent. During the live or before or after the live. We don't know when he sent it, but it was two weeks ago. Have you guys received this new term sheet of his? No. You guys haven't received it yet, right? Just like just like like words is a message. You can give me a message with words. Silence is too. Right. Say asking your girl, like, yeah, I heard you was cheating with you was cheating on me with, with somebody, and she just gets silent. She don't say nothing. <laughs> Right, right. Yeah. And I'm like, yo, what the fuck? Like, what's you don't hear me talking to you? You, you, you guilty or something? What? He's silent. He not saying nothing. First he was capping. Now he's silent. He know what time it is. <laughs> I mean, it's like if you meet a a new girl, right, a significant other, and you get her number, you know, so on and so forth, and and you text her for ten days or two weeks, and she don't reply. What you gonna do? You're gonna move on because you're gonna figure out, man, she's not interested. You know what I'm saying? And Gary Russell, that's pretty much what he did. So you guys are making the step forward to make the fight, and he's always making step backwards, adding stipulations. I'm always complaining to the fans, but not taking care of business behind the closed doors. So if somebody doesn't reply to you, you obviously gotta move on. You can't pause your career because they clearly not interested. Russell, yeah. Gary would like to take. A, a year off fight and then go a whole year without fighting go fight go a year a whole year off without fighting we had we, we tried to make the fight happen and we still can make this fight happen but he's still not even saying nothing he right this we can say after this fight boom gary russell boom we gonna fight whatever the fuck he, he don't want to do it you guys heard it from the dream you want to fight Gary Russell after Gamboa. If he's willing to fight you after the Gamboa fight, you're willing to fight him early next year, let's say. Of course. I'm, I'm, I've been willing to fight, but if he if he could come out and say, yeah, we could fight next year. We, we could do that just, just to get motherfuckers off his ass. But when it come that time, like he did this time, when it come that time to sign that them dotted lines, he ain't going to do it. So that's why I'm not even going to give him that. That, that opportunity to even lie and cap to the fans. Like, yeah, we're going to fight next year. We're going to fight next year. In our reality, when it comes that time, he ain't going to do it. So why is Gary Russell doing this to himself? I mean, he had the boogeyman status till he came and tested you, and you put him in a corner. You told him either you fight back or you wave the white flag. Well, what's going on with Gary Russell? Why he's going through all this, you know, going through the motion with you if he doesn't want the fight? The man do a whole lot of capping. He was he 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 had this boogeyman on him, but in all reality, it was all cap. Nobody pulled this card. It was it was all persona. Nobody pulled this card. Devin Haney was the first person to pull this card, and that's when he was talking about Crawford, talking about he was gonna go up to fight. That he'd go up and wait. He, did he say he was going to one forty seven and fight Crawford? Yeah, he did say that. Out of here, get the fuck out of here. <laughs> Listen, but Crawford went took the high road. And you know what I'm saying, which is like, man, like basically was like, didn't think he was really worth his time. But Devin Haney, he got time. <laughs> man, you a bad man. Like I said, I mean, Gary Russell was, uh, I mean, terrorizing people out here, man. You know what I'm saying? Nobody wanted to mention his name till Devin the Dream pulled up. That's why I said, man, your new nickname is Devin A. Boogie Haney. Because you got the A-class boogie status. Every time you send a fighter a contract, they start singing, oh, nah, 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 like they A-boogie. You know what I'm saying? So 
like I said, man, nothing but respect for that because hater or love it, you know, either side, you know, Gary Russell fans or your fans, hater or love it, they must respect it. They must respect what you're doing, which is demanding the fights. So nothing but respect for that. What is it about Devin? What is it about Devin Haney that made Gary Russell wave the white flag, that made Lomachenko, you know, you changed his first name to Nomachenko or last name. And so he surrendered his WBC strap, even though he's a pound for pound fighter. But what is it about Devin Haney that has all these fighters like Fortuna, Linares, Ryan, Tio, everybody got you last on their wish list? Everybody, they're looking at different directions, but your direction. I'm so versatile that I could do it all. I could box, I could bang, I could punch, I got speed, I got movement, I got everything. And I dedicate myself to the sport of boxing. I'm not out here drinking, smoking. You know what I'm saying? Nobody can say that about me. Nobody can say, oh, they saw me at the club and I was drinking. Nobody can say, they, oh, I smoked with Devin the other day. Or, you know what I'm saying, that I'm out here, that I'm out here just doing anything. Devin, Devin Haney is a student of the game and Devin Haney's focused. So that's what makes me 10 times more deadlier. I appreciate it. Devin Haney, the dream for pulling up. This guy right here is the future of boxing. I have the potential to be pound for pound number one. Uh, a lot of people feel like Devin Haney is the Kobe of boxing. So that's the potential that Devin Haney has. And one thing for sure, he won't be wasting his potential. So I appreciate you, Devin, for giving me the time out of your day. Talking to the fans has always been a pleasure. Like I said, at the end of the day, they could hate it or love it, but they must respect it. And we all respect Devin Haney because you are Devin A. Boogie Haney, the A-class boogeyman in the sport of boxing. So I appreciate y'all for having me. I appreciate y'all for having me. And I'll see y'all soon. Tune in November 7th. I bear witness there's only one God, Allah, and Muhammad is his final messenger. That's why I said, Larry, on the Bungu fight, thanking you. They call me the problem, but you could call me the can man, because anybody can get it. Africans, Americans, Dominicans, Mexicans, anybody can get it.